If you want to fly on some rare older props, Sweden is a good place to do it. After flying on the hard to find Fokker 50, we'll link to that video below, my next goal was to catch a ride on a homegrown plane, and by that I mean a Saab. Saab hasn't made a commercial plane in a long time, but you'll still find the Saab 340 and Saab 2000 flying in various parts of the world, including on a number of mostly domestic routes in Sweden and Norway too. That's thanks to the tiny Swedish airline Air Leap, which has one Saab 2000, a handful of 340s, and an ATR as well. I've been hoping to get on the 2000 because it's the most rare, but I wasn't in luck this time. In the end, I got a couple of rides on the 340B, which is still fun. The route, Stockholm's smaller Bromma Airport to Malmö in the south. Flight time, about an hour. A couple of weeks after this flight, Swedish authorities announced that they plan to close down Bromma for good. Lately, there are just a handful of flights a day from the airport, so that's no surprise. Plus, there's been pressure to consolidate all of Stockholm's commercial flights at the more distant Arlanda for years. Those who aren't av geeks, or those who aren't used to props, might find the Saab 340 a little loud and buzzy. The sound here doesn't give an accurate sense. This is not a quiet plane. And of course, it's a small plane, so you do bounce around quite a bit in turbulence. But if you're into flying, it's a pretty nice ride, especially when you can get a solo seat that's both a window and an aisle. No other plane between these two cities can offer that. Flights between Arlanda and Malmö see a mix of A320s, CRJs, and ATRs. Yes, the jets will be faster and quieter, but what's the fun in that? This is a simple flight with no service whatsoever and free seating, but that works perfectly well on a shuttle service like this. And the ease of moving through tiny Broma Airport adds to the convenience. I also like the Airleap logo and color scheme quite a bit, and staff were all friendly. Overall, a pleasant and easy experience. The airline runs a handful of flights, mostly around the southern half of Sweden, plus some in Norway. It also has a service to a place called Mariehamn in Åland, the autonomous, Finnish-administered, Swedish-speaking island region between the two countries. Definitely on my post-pandemic list of places to go. Many aviation fans lament the fact that Saab stopped making commercial planes, just as many who like cars bemoan the loss of Saab automobiles. Saab still runs a thriving operation as a defense supplier, making hardware like the Gripen fighter jet. But us civilians don't have many opportunities to ride in something built by the company these days. The 340 first flew back in 1983, and production stopped in the late 90s, so the youngest of these planes are already well over 20 years old. There were a little over 400 of them built, and the latest figures show something like half of them still flying. That said, the pandemic may have cut down that figure further. The good news is, most 340s are only at about half their total lifetime cycles, so we may see these continuing to fly for many years yet. Are you a fan of the Saab 340, or do you prefer a newer, quieter plane? Let us know in the comments, and tell us what flight videos you'd like to see in the future. We'll be making many more of these in the coming weeks and months, and we aim to please. In Stockholm, for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.